the Indian film industry, a colossus that spans many dimensions, past and present. A mammoth fund of illusion, with the hard backbone of reality supporting it. This in 1970. Exactly a hundred years ago, the father of the Indian film industry was born. The child of his dreams is a growing titan, now 57 years old. Today, there are numerous studios and laboratories equipped with the latest machinery. The industry employs thousands. It has a technique of its own and draws a mass audience lured by the glitter and glamour of the make-believe world of cinema. Yet, not so long ago, there were no moving pictures, just paintings and still pictures. Early pioneers like Thomas Edison, the Lumiere brothers and Georges Méliès then discovered the persistence of vision. A series of still pictures, if projected in rapid succession, created the illusion of movement. So was born the modern motion picture. Early films were made with simple equipment and usually in the open. In 1903, the first successful story film, The Great Train Robbery, was made in America. It established for the first time what is now common film knowledge, that the art of motion picture depended on the continuity of shots and not on shots alone. In the first decade of the 20th century, many films were made in Europe and in America. In time, they came to India. Regular shows were started. Attracted by these marvels of the century was a young artist photographer from Nasik, Dundiraj Govind Falke, born on 30th April 1870. Once he saw a film on the life of Christ, it set his alert mind thinking. He visualized the image of Lord Krishna in place of Jesus Christ. The idea became an obsession. To make films became his mission in life. Like a man possessed, he set about discovering for himself the technique of filmmaking. Sleep deserted him. Strain and fatigue took their toll. He lost his vision, but not his determination. Timely medical aid restored his eyesight. He now resolved to go to England to get equipment and guidance. Family tradition records that there was no cash in the house, so he staked all his possessions. His wife, his most important collaborator, pawned her ornaments. With this, and some help from friends, he went to England in 1912. While there, he visited studios, met technicians, acquired first-hand knowledge, and purchased the necessary equipment. Returning, he set up his studios and launched his first film, Raja Harish Chandra. His was a one-man show. He was art director, makeup man, director, cameraman, editor, all in one. That was not all. Women refused to act in his film, so men had to be persuaded to play the parts.
date in 1912, the film was completed. It was 3,700 feet long, a marathon project for those early days. In 1913, it opened at the Coronation Cinema, Bombay. The hand-cranked camera and projector did not make for uniformity of speed or smoothness of movement, but the audience was not critical. There was no dialogue, but title cards explained the progress of the story. the hero king set out on his hunting expedition, to observe sage Vishwamitra at his austerities, to witness the rescue of the damsels in distress, the sage's wrath, the king's sacrifice of his crown and kingdom, to see all this and more in flesh and blood on the silver screen was to the audience an unforgettable experience. The film was an overwhelming success and proved to be a veritable gold mine. The press took note of this outstanding event. Lokmanya Tilak's paper, Kesari, though primarily devoted to the freedom struggle, hailed the birth of the Swadeshi moving picture and praised Falke's pioneering efforts. The success of Raja Harish Chandra led to Mohini Bhasmasur and Satyavan Savitri. More would have followed, but the flames of the 1914 war nearly killed the infant industry. Many difficulties dogged Falke's footsteps. Financial stringency was only one of them. But undaunted, he persevered. Simple, unassuming, he was a tireless worker. He wrote, produced, directed, photographed, edited, processed, and personally supervised nearly all his films. His loyal colleagues stood by him through his time of trial. His family contributed their might. His daughter, Mandakini, was rehearsed to play the role of the boy Krishna for his new film, Kalya Mardan, a film in which Falke was at last to fulfill his first ambition to portray the life of Lord Krishna on the screen. Soon the tide turned. The success of Lanka Dahan brought money. It also attracted others in the field and film companies sprang up all over India. Competition spurred Falke to greater effort. Between 1914 and 1931, till the coming of the talkies, he made many films, each a tribute to his fine pictorial sense and technical resourcefulness. Like Georges Méliès before him, Falke was a special effects genius he discovered magic in the motion picture camera. In his films, he explored a vast range of techniques, including animation, scenic models, and trick photography. In 
his later films, he was also able to persuade women to act before his camera, thus solving for all time the problem in India of casting women's roles in films. Falke's film stories came mostly from mythology and had for his audience a religious significance. They also secured for the Indian film an instant mass appeal at home and in the neighboring countries. Falke retired from filmmaking in 1936. His last film and his only talkie was Ganga Avataram. 1939 marked a new milestone in the history of the Indian film. Under the presidentship of Sri Satyamurti, the industry celebrated its silver jubilee. On this auspicious occasion, press and public paid tribute to the creator and doyen of Indian films, Dada Saheb Falke. His work done, Dada Saheb retired to Nasik, his hometown. Here, at the age of 74, he passed away in 1944. Today, Dada Sahib's house in Nasik, the Hinsine Janak Ashram, and the site of his studio revives nostalgic memories among his one-time colleagues. Bombay, where he made his Raja Harish Chandra, honors his memory with a main road named after him. Having lit the first lamp, Dada Sahib lived to see many lamps lit all over the country. He lived to see his dream come true, his dream of creating Indian films, films made in India by Indians with Indian artists, Indian themes, costumes, dances, music, dialogue. Films for an Indian audience. From a small beginning, the industry has today grown to significant proportions with film studios and production centers located all over the country. Films have increased in quantity and improved in quality. Dada Sahib, in his days, had made topical shorts and cartoon films. Today, the government makes these on a large scale. Dada Saheb had learnt filmmaking the hard way. Today's young men and women, aspiring to a film career, have their course charted and simplified for them. The course of time has also brought greater film consciousness among the people and the state authorities. Increasing recognition, both at home and abroad, has raised standards and awakened worldwide interest in Indian films. Films which owe their being to Dada Saheb Falke's pioneering zeal in the face of insuperable difficulties. Dada Saheb laid the cornerstone of a new art industry in India. On it today has grown up a superstructure of immense proportions. After 57 years, the Indian film can look upon its past achievements with pride. Achievements in which Dada Sahib Falke will hold honored place for all time. <laughs>